Hey, and welcome to the first episode of LNG, the LNG show. I seem to be the only person here as of right now. If anybody comes in, they can just pop in or pop out. It doesn't really matter. I'm actually live on my Discord right now with the community Discord for LNG. So anyone can just pop in and pop out. But it's 12.01 exactly right now in the afternoon in Chicago. So I'm guessing that it might be 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, other places, or maybe 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, other places. I don't know. So they are actually either asleep, working, or what have you. And by I mean by they, I mean my other co-hosts, co-stars, whatever you want to call them. Uh, as I said before, this is the first episode of the LNG show. Now, for the most part, this used to be called LNG Watchmen. But I had the bright idea to change it from LNG Watchmen to LNG, the LNG show. So, without further ado, let's hop right into the show and what I have planned for you guys today because it'll just be me and you. And I do apologize for those who find my voice annoying, but I mean, it's just me. So, at the end of the day, fuck you. Let's get back in. Let's get right back into it. Now, I'm going to give you guys uh, recommendations of shows that I'm, that I'm watching or in the middle of watching as of right now on uh, BRV or Funimation. I'll go over like two animes that I'm watching. The first anime that I'm watching is on Verve and it's called Redo of Healer. Now, without spoiling anything else about the anime by itself, just know that the title speaks for itself. Redo of Healer gets us into a, into a situation where he has to redo the entire world. Yada, yada, yada. Basic Isaki trope. But it's interesting because he keeps his memories after he redo. And no one else knows. He's just changing the timeline to where, like, after a certain event. Like, he follows all certain events until a certain point. And then that's when he's like, okay, it's time to get my revenge. And the anime is pretty fucked up. Don't get me wrong. The anime is definitely fucked up. I don't recommend this anime for the faint of heart only because it's okay, it does have s I wouldn't say questionable decisions, but he's out for revenge. He's trying to get his revenge on these people that did him wrong. And as people say, they don't forget those who wronged them. But Redo of Healer is a good anime because of the fact that it's, to me, it's a new spin off on a lot of different things. For one, it's, the first episode is an attention grabber, first of all, because epic battle scene, in the middle of a fight against the Demon Lord, then all of a sudden, all shit goes to hell. All the heroes are down. They're like, oh, save me, healer, save me. And then he just snaps. Like, right there, he just snaps. And then just basically goes rogue and says, fuck what you say. I'm going to go my own way. And I think that that's like a message to me, to me, to me rather. That's like a message to anybody that actually didn't feel like that they've been stuck in a rut or stuck in something that they feel like that they can't get out of. Uh, anime sometimes speaks when it comes down to lessons because you learn lessons from certain anime. And this is lessons, you know, even though you're going through crap, you can always find a way to turn things over in your favor. Now, I'm not going to give out the rest of the anime, but it is a good anime you should definitely check out. Uh, another anime that I am watching on Verb is called so I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a spider. So what? I'm a spider. So what? that's what it is. It's I'm a spider. So what? Now this anime is a definitely an is an isekai, and those who don't know what isekai is, basically transfer to another world. High schoolers get transferred to another world where night magic exists. So this one, one of the main characters gets reincarnated into another world with 
her classmates, but all her classmates are different, like races and humans and whatnot, and they all have different upbringings. She gets reincarnated into a spider, and it's a demon, sp- like, a, like a demon spider. And so the anime is just funny. I'm not going to spoil anything for nobody, but the anime is definitely funny. It's cutesy. It'll make you laugh. It'll get you excited. you like, oh, this spider is just fucking up everybody. Yes, she definitely is fucking up everybody. And it's a good anime to watch. And again, these animes are on Verb, V-R-V. The first one is called Redo of Healer. The second one is called I'm a Spider, So What? Now we're going to get to the anime I'm watching on Funimation. And as I feel like I have, since we're going about this Isaki road today, we are going to talk about Log Horizon Season 3. And I've been waiting for Log Horizon for a very, very, very long time. Only because Log Horizon Season 3... Season 2 lets off with so many questions. Season 3 is going to answer so many questions as to where's Krusty, what's happening to the round table, Log Horizon is getting bigger, is it going to get bigger, are they going to go into the American server or the American side of the, of the server? It's, it's a lot of questions will be answered in Season 3. A lo- lot of questions. Oh shit, who was that? Who the fuck was that? You know what? Oh, it's you. Like I said, <laughs> like I said before, um, this is Matthew, everybody. People are going to be coming in and out, talking and whatnot. Uh, we were just talking about Log Horizon Season 3. I thought she was at work. Oh, so you, so this girl was fucking up for you. That's what you're trying to say. Okay, I understand that. <laughs> but like I said, we were talking about Log Horizon Season 3. Is Log Horizon something that you watched? Is it something that's been catching your eye? JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. You can watch that. <laughs> oh, you big JoJo. Have you seen all three JoJo's or just the one of JoJo's? Okay, there's like four JoJo's now. Yeah, there's like four JoJo's. Yes, indeed, you do. Indeed. But like I said, Log Horizon is definitely an Isaki trope. It follows a lot of stuck in another world, video game type of world. So I think I like it because it's, it's simple. You know, they get transported to a, to a different world. That was their game. It's speaks volumes when it comes down to the writing because they took a long break from Long Horizon. I think they, they, they took a long break from the manga too as well or giving it time to catch up or get ahead. But I also heard that the original writer was facing some, not bones, but legal trouble. He 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 went to jail, jail for some reason. I don't I don't know why he went to jail, but he went to jail. And I've had you on mute this entire time. Oh, woe is me. That is stupid of me. So everybody, again, this is Matthew. He's gonna be talking for however long he's going to be in here for um uh, let's see uh, i guess that's it um, i'm in two of his uh homebrew worlds uh zodiac warriors and mandalorians rpg oh yeah that's right i do i for everybody that don't know i do dm dnd i have Two campaigns going right now. One's called The Mandalorian. The other one is called uh, Ruby, R-W-B-B-Y. And yes, it's from Ruby the Anime. I made a D&D game. For not in that one. You said what? Not in that one. Yeah, yeah. You're not in that one. You're in The Mandalorian, which we played sometime today. But The Mandalorian, and then I have Zodiac Warriors that I'm working diligently on, as well as one or two other campaigns. But since we're on the topic of 
D and D, which we don't get a lot of chance to talk about here on the podcast. Um, are you enjoying the campaign so far? Um, I mean, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to this. Yes, I am, but I feel like I have been rushing you a little bit more than I should be, and I'm not giving you enough time to think of story. Also, I'm the chaotic barbarian. Who's Which party doesn't need a chaotic barbarian? But I mean, it's not about you, it's just about the entire group as a whole. Uh, because it takes time to actually to move from point A to point B, especially when you guys have different schedules and different lives going on outside. So you leave you leave after two hours or an hour or two hours and a half or like, you know, two hours and 45 minutes. And then by that time, we're like already knee deep into the story. And then I kind of have to derail the entire story just so you don't miss out on the main story. So yeah, I know, man. I'm sorry. I got I got a hard schedule schedule. Yeah. No, I understand. Everybody does. Everybody does. But you know, it's it's life. You know, you live and you learn. Yeah. Speaking of living and learning, um, uh, TikTok. Been hearing a lot on about TikTok and the black cosplayer community, cause I'm pretty sure you have heard that when black people try to cosplay as anime characters they sometimes are met with a lot of hate because quote unquote they don't match the skin color of certain characters and i know this is a hot button topic but i feel like it's something that we should at least talk about because it is black history month and we do have a lot of black cosplayers in our group and i want them to feel welcome and know that you know this is a safe place for you to share your content i'm always trying to get cosplayers to share the content in my group it doesn't seem to be working so far but i'll keep on trying uh matthew what do you think about the whole cosplayers attacking black cosplayers because they th- their skin don't fit the character i think And I don't really have much of an opinion on this because I wasn't aware of it until five seconds ago when you told me. Um, I don't think anybody should be attacked for doing something they enjoy. True. Very true. And, oh boy. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Uh, Yeah, that's basically it. Well, it is. It's always been a problem. It's been happening for years in conventions on Snapchat. Oh, that, that's terrible. Yes, it's definitely terrible. It's something that needs to change immediately because it's hurting a lot of people. Like, uh, there recently I was reading through Facebook, and then there's one bot black cosplay that was on TikTok, and the toxic fan base on TikTok is they just ran her away, and like. It's stupid. Like, why would you... First of all, it takes a lot for somebody to create something and put it out there for the public to judge. Like, even with my D&D uh, homebrew campaign, like, I used to have them live. It took a lot of courage just to put it out there and to just to say, hey, I created this. Take a look at this. Judge it. And that people don't understand that, you know... For some people, that anxiety is just a lot. Extremely overwhelming and makes you want to burst and just yeah, exactly. yell at everything. Exactly. And for you to just tear it down just because, like, they can have the most amazing clothes, be spot on with everything else, personality, the way they their, way their, their demeanor is and whatnot. And then for pricks like you or pricks like people – to just ridicule just because of the color of their skin doesn't match the skin tone. And I'm like, well, technically, if you want to be technical, all these characters are Japanese. If the same thing could be said that when a true. white person tries to cosplay as as an anime character, too. The same thing should be said for them because, truthfully, all these characters are Japanese. They're not black. Well, some are black. Let's just, some, some are black. Some are white. The blonde hair, blue eyes. You know, that's the... That's a typical, you know, the trope. Yeah, trope to to white people that are in in anime, and then black people are in there as well. My whole thing about it is, 
is that it's weird that people people are like that. Like people are. There could be several reasons for why people like to do that. It could be they want attention for themselves, no matter what kind of attention it is. Could be they're just angry. It could be. I'm not saying everyone is that way, but like people are also born like that sometimes. Like they're born into an already really racist family, and it's hard for them to get out of that. Uh huh. Like, I'm not defending them. No, 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 no. I, I, I get you. I get you. I get you. I get what you're doing. I get what you're trying to say. Like, you know, you can't help your upbringings. You can't help where you grew up in. You can't help who your parents are. Like, you but can't what you help can like do, that. people, you can change yourself every day of your life. You can determine on whether you say something wrong or something right. You can determine on whether you hurt someone or you can help someone. It's all up to you. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what people don't understand is that instead of just trying to destroy each other, build each other up, like, so what if a black cosplayer wants to cosplay Hinata? I've seen some amazing, cute, and sexy, by the way, cosplayers that have cosplayed as Hinata. And then they ch- they get their own spin on it and give her the fro, you know, give her a little, like, a little flair and whatnot. It's just amazing. And, like, we, we shouldn't be limited to the color of our skin when it comes down to, to creating something. Because Monty Python said it himself the best. Not not Monty Python. Fucking, um, damn it. <laughs> Monty Orm. Um, Monty Orm. Um, not Monty Python. Monty Orm um from uh, Roof to Sheep who created Ruby. He said, and I quote, that the goal is not to live forever. It's to create something that will. And when you ridicule and destroy people, you take away that chance for them to create something that will last forever. Or that can give someone else somewhere down the line the courage to do something else. And that could create something that everybody can benefit from just from watching that one person. And we have Jesus here. Hello. Jesus just popped in. Like I said, people are going to be popping in and out. Hopefully more people will come. But if not, then this is perfectly fine. Uh, Jesus, you came you came in at a weird time. We were talking about the black cosplayers and the community, them being ridiculed and made fun of and brought down in this toxic environment because, quote unquote, their skin tone don't match the character. I don't know. I feel like that's been going on for a long time. But if you're a genuine like person and fan of the arts in any way, shape, or form, what what does it matter? Exactly. Exactly. Like to me, exactly. it's just silly that you're gonna sit there and, and and complain because you don't have the body type or something like that. You know what? A lot of people don't have the body type that they magically create because it's fictional. Mm-hmm. It's all fictional and it's all cartoons, regardless. At the end of the day, like as, as much as uh, anime is, like I know that it's not really a cartoon made for kids, but it's a cartoon made for adults, and that's realistically what you have to take away with at the end of the day. The longer that you subjugate it to real life rules, the more that you realize that it isn't real. So therefore, you like I would imagine those people just start panicking at that fact, and they get angry at it for no good reason because it doesn't look exactly like they wanted it to be. Exactly. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there are things within the community I don't like within everything in general with the over sexualization and mm-hmm. just being able to walk away with it and not really be a fan of anything or not and you know have somebody else create your outfit and teach the community nothing to me that's sort of on the toxic side too because you're just taking advantage of the culture mm-hmm. you know I mean, I, I don't even mind, like, if they watch the anime and they think it's cool or something like that. But where I start to take issue is that they really don't care for it. I've seen a couple cosplayers that were professionals because um, stuff that I had to do related to selling sword work allowed me to go to all these conventions. And you would hear them talk shit about stuff that they would do as far as characters would go. And they didn't watch it. They could care less. They hated it. But they only did it because it got likes and subscribes, you know? Yeah, it shouldn't be that way. If you're creating something, you should honestly enjoy what you're doing. Now, I do agree with you about the over-sexualization part. And that, has become, that is a big problem when it comes down to conventions 
and people were expressing them themselves about certain characters that they like, and it's become a big problem because of what the male libido. It just seems that like, and I've seen it at conventions that some dudes just can't help themselves or control themselves when it comes down to seeing a girl half naked. I'm like. Come on, dude. She's half naked. Okay, yeah, she has a nice body, whatever, what have you, and whatnot. But she's not here for that. What she's wearing is an expression of art. And when you're trying to hump her leg or get her to do something that she doesn't want to do and whatnot, it becomes very cringy. And, like, it's so much, like, people think that nerds don't exuberate toxicness. But we do. Like, we're humans just like everybody else, and we put people in a box to where it has to be exactly like the anime, or it has to be this way or that way. To be honest, I don't care if a chubby girl wants to wants to cosplay as Hinata. Like, you know, uh, I've seen some chubby cosplayers that look phenomenal. There was this one BBW cosplayer who did a female Doom. And she did it spot on and phenomenal. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can get behind that. But at the same time, you have dudes in the comments saying inappropriate stuff and doing this and doing that. And it's just like you make people not want to do this anymore. There's there's two things that I I need to bring up too. Mm -hmm. Just because a cosplayer does wear something sexy, I know that this is a bit contradictory, but also something to factor in because there is no real black and white here, right? Right. But the, the people that generally dress sexy are probably the people with the lowest self-esteem. Like, you wouldn't even know, but most of the booby girls have shitty problems, and a lot of them seem to think that they're ugly. Right. A lot of women in general just seem to think that they're ugly. Like, I'm pretty sure most men sit there and think at the end of the day that they're ugly, but they just sort of deal with it differently. Mm-hmm. For women, they like to get you know, dressed up, show on, and then especially at a, at a convention where they're really attached to the character or something, and then, you know, they may reveal a little bit more, so that way they can get a little bit more, you know, eye pops and wows, and you know what, that's just a big confidence booster for them at the end of the day, but, you know, what really breaks it is that men are creepy. Yes. We do weird things. Yes, we are. We are definitely the creeps. I don't think that they're any creepier than women, but, you know, men do some really messed up stuff that makes it impossible for anybody to really coexist. I didn't know how creepy women can be, and this is a shout-out to the group that I used to be a part of. This is a shout-out to them. Uh, I didn't know how women, I didn't know how creepy women could be until I joined uh, Nighttime Anime. I didn't know how perverted women can be until I joined that group. And then nighttime anime, it just speak, speak, speaks for itself. Nighttime, shit goes bump in the night, shit gets shared, shit gets shown. And I'm like, these girls are creepy. Like, more creepy than some guys. And it's funny to see that other spectrum because it opens up your mind to where, oh, women are perverts, are perverted just like men are. But that doesn't give anybody the right to just, you know, go up to somebody and grab them by the pussy or inappropriately touch them, but they they don't want to be touched, you know. Just admire from afar. And if she's okay with posing with you with a picture or something or talking to you, then by all means, go right ahead. Do it, but don't be, don't be creepy. Don't, don't be that, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy that ruins it for everybody else, basically. And everything goes full circle around to where the women cosplayers and the black cosplayers, because it's majority what I've seen are the men tearing down both of these sections of, of cosplayers. That one, and then what they also got to understand is that even for celebrities that make millions and millions of dollars, they can see a thousand positive comments and only see the one negative one. That's oh, why Mac yeah. Miller killed himself, and that's why Chad... Uh, Chad uh, Bennington from uh, Lincoln Park and Tree Star didn't get killed. That's, you know, that's why he murdered himself. It's just so, yeah. it's just so sad that you know, we live in a day and age where the keyboard warriors get away with almost anything to say what they want to say on on the internet, and it's sad, and it's, it's just sickening, and I just can't believe that they would do that. Like, 
people well from what you gotta understand they're salty too their lives probably didn't go as well as expected and they're they're doing it from like you know the convenience of the roach infested uh, uh park you know what i mean like you don't know what that person's going through or maybe he's just mentally unstable because of a series of unfortunate events there's nothing much really to say other than obviously they're jealous obviously they can't achieve that high of anything in their lifetime so they feel the need to tear others down when they should be supporting you just like you should be supporting your friends who start open a business or anything like that like you shouldn't this expect a handout this is true but at the same time just because you're going through something something doesn't give you the right to be a dick like i'm going through shit yeah. all i'm going through shit every single day like ups and downs i'm just gonna be completely 100 with you guys i don't have the best self-esteem and it's something that I've struggled with day in and day out. But sometimes you wouldn't even know that I struggle with my self-confidence unless I've told you that I struggle with my self-confidence. And it's like, you know, j just because I'm feeling low or just because I'm feeling horrible about something doesn't mean I can just go and belittle someone else just to make myself feel better. It's like, no, like, that's not right. That's not the humane thing to do. That's not the human thing to do. Because at the end of the day... Hate only breeds hate, and pain only breeds more pain. Misery's best friend is misery and company. Exactly. There's a quote from pain. I was meant to say a quote, but I didn't say it right. <laughs> it's okay. There's a quote from pain in there somewhere from from Naruto. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know where by where. I'm not going to attempt to butcher it. But yeah, that's uh, hate only breeds hate, and it's just. If I attack you, Jesus, or if I belittle you, you know, I don't know what that could be doing to you. Like, that could that could drive you to, like you said with, with um, Mac Miller and Chad, to kill yourself. Or with any other people on the internet. Like, you don't, like, everybody takes things differently. And just because you're having a shitty day or a bad day doesn't mean that you should just take your anger or frustrations out on somebody else. And that is something that here in the community of LNG where we try to build a positive environment for everybody because there's been situations where we've had to ban, kick out, and let leave the people that wanted to bring tox like toxicity into our home. And we don't allow that. We want to create a safe place for everybody just where they can talk and express themselves and whatnot and Try to the get problem along. isn't more or less with the difference of opinion. It's more or less exactly how you bring it up and how respectful you are. Nowadays, everybody just, you know, what a lot of people see is, oh, yeah, I had my opinion, and that's it. Hmm. Everybody else can go go be terrible human beings, and that's not particularly how it is. At not all. particularly, no. Not particularly, no. Not particularly. So I understand that. But that was a, that was a good talk. We have to talk more about that at a different time when we are uh when we are not on the air because our conversation get kind of raunchy and kind of inappropriate okay so hey zeus oh, this is, really yeah so, hey zeus this is your ballpark i want to talk about the last of us too i really want to get into this because it seems like you have so much to say about the last of us too and I've never played The Last of Us 2. I've never even seen the gameplay for The Last of Us 2. I've seen little bits here's and pieces the thing, here I really can't... Well, what I'll be honest is, is that I really can't speak for it, but I've seen what a lot of the fans that have played it and what the community really think about it. Like, um, the guy that I generally follow on YouTube is called The Closer Look. And uh, he generally does, like, really, really well detailed uh, stories on why things are the way they are, and he was explaining that they basically divided the fan base on it by killing Joel, but not because they killed him, more or less, because of the way that they killed him at the time they killed him, and then that there's certain pacing for things in the game. Is that and, right? and which makes perfect sense, because I've seen like 90% of the story already of everybody has had, you know, some sort of input to say on it. Hmm. But, but you don't believe it, it deserved not... Game of the Year, though. I don't, realistically. Um, I mean, Personally, I've never played a single Last of Us game. Yeah, me either. The first one was really good. The first one was more or less, and I played that one, and I really enjoyed it. 
It was more or less like a, a weird story where you're just sort of traveling across America that's all broken down. And then it's basically like a story of, you know, basically, uh, what is it, uh, planes, trains, and automobiles or whatnot with the, the, the dude Uncle Buck or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Where you yeah. don't really like the character at first, but then you find out he's homeless and all this other stuff, and he's just a really nice guy trying to do the right thing. Interesting. It's always they're they're always trying to do the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Always. <laughs> and there's Monica. Four person. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, beautiful people oh, of L and G. Yes. Good morning. It is definitely morning for some in the evening time slot. <laughs> it is so morning. sounds like we're talking about the Last of Us. We were talking about the Last of Us after we got done talking about. The black community and cosplayers and a whole bunch of other Ooh. stuff. So I don't know. I don't know what's like going on with. Well, first of all, The Last of Us. I've like I said, I never played the first one. Never played the second one, but I've heard very good things about it. And mm -hmm. it's just that I don't know. The Last of Us is just. It is not a game that it will appeal to me to play. Like from for for me, for my own opinion, I don't play games. I don't play single player games because if I the only single player games that I do play is fucking XCOM. It's XCOM, and I like strategy games. Period. And Sim. But other than that, a story based driven game like you know Assassin's Creed or Gears of War single player mode or whatnot, I won't play those games. Oh my god, you're missing out on a lot of stuff right there, man. No, 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 I don't know. No, no. I I have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I just don't have Ragnarok. I've I'm still Ragnarok having... is pretty much the only Assassin's Creed game that even looks semi interesting to me. To be fair. Yeah, like I've I'm not even done with Odyssey, and it's been like what, two, like three, four years since. Odyssey to be honest, I played the first original Assassin's Creed, realized how boring and repetitive it is, played the second one, realized nothing's changed, and ever since then have not picked it up. <laughs> I normally just, this is why I do an Assassin's Creed, I normally just go into the busiest part of the town when I'm like completely bored, I go into the busiest part of the town and I start killing guards, and I see how long I can last. And all around me, it's like dead bodies. I'm like, do you not see these dead bodies? And you guys still coming. Like, I killed everybody here, and yet you still want to come. Like, there should be some type of, like... There should be some type of fear factor in that game. What is wrong with your mic, Monica? You were just... Chewing on it. Rubbing on it, alright? Leave it be. She's chewing on it. Hold on. No. I'm not gonna lie. I was rubbing together, like, I'm trying to warm myself up. <laughs> so Damn. cold. Damn. It's so cold. So how cold. Many, how many, how cold is it outside right now? Because I'm hot as fuck in here. Yeah, it's like, so cold. I wanted to that a second ago. It's, it's 17 degrees, degrees but it's actively snowing. Alexa, off. Mm, that's, that's another thing I don't get. You, everybody in this whole Alexa thing like i understand technology is supposed to make home, man. Uh, I, I don't know i understand that that, that can, technology is supposed to make our lives a lot easier but at the mm -hmm. same time it's like you have alexa turn a volume alexa turn off the tv alexa paint me a picture alexa look up this alexa <laughs> fix my portfolio you know alexa go to school for me it's like you making it it's making everybody lazy when it comes down to no. like the nitty gritty <laughs> like ultra lazy that's my opinion. That's you you want to hear the funniest part of it all? What? Right? The people that invented that and the people that did do that stuff, they know what's in it, right? Right. And they don't have it for a reason. A lot of people in the tech community that do programming and stuff like that, they won't touch that stuff. Okay, well, what's in it? What exactly is in it? Now I'm curious. Uh, a lot of stuff to just basically track you and listen in on everything that you say. I mean, it's no different than your phone, but I think they do it more aggressively because they're a private company trying to dig in and steal your ideas and you don't like those things. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I have, so, like, especially if you're a creative person, like, why would you want someone there knowing that your programming company specifically is supposed to have them catch a 10-second snippet and then take it because they have the resources and money to pry you into the ground first? Hmm. Hmm. 
interesting. I mean, I kind of figured that, but it's like, they're watching us anyway. So, I mean, might as well enjoy it. have the convenience of having something that can help you. I mean, you're always going to be tracked. You got a phone, yeah. you got technology. You're Somebody, in a populated area. You're good. You can easily be tracked. Yeah. Like you don't understand. As soon as you leave your house, you literally you're captured on camera before you even leave your block. Before you leave your building, you're most likely caught on camera. Like there's cameras and listening devices everywhere. Especially us living in you know big cities and stuff and urban communities. There's cameras everywhere. There's listening devices everywhere. My whole thing is, is that, and this is kind of creep. It's kind of creeped me out to a point where, as I kind of turned off all my locations on my iPhone, when my iPhone knew exactly where my car was, I'm like, bitch, how do you know yeah. where my car is at? Your car is like mm-hmm. 15 feet. I'm like, the fuck? How do you know where my fucking car is at? Okay, that's, that's different though. For cars, they are literally walking. They're not walking. What's the word I'm looking for? Traveling machines that track you and make sure. They know where you are and stop you before you are hitting something. Sir, I have a 2017 Nissan Versa. It is not that. Uh, Even in 2017. (laughs) I think they had those things in 2014, man. Really? 2014? They had that shit in 2014? They started adding stuff like that. Jesus Christ. But you got to understand this, that they slowly take away your rights so that I won't start on you know, Donald Trump and try to riot bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't remind me about the whole Capital March thing. That that was crazy. Oh, it's on TV right yeah, now. Yeah, they're doing the uh, Inquisition right now. They're still that figuring is... out whether or not they're going to bust his ass. That was crazy. He needs to be impeached. Like, I'm sorry. Be... We don't we, we, we don't <laughs> talk politics and LNG, longer. but he needs to be he needs to be fucking. You impeached. just went outside. Sorry. And he's yelling at his dog because his dog needs to go poopy. That's not. A cannot. Li- he cannot be impeached as of yet because he is no longer president. Which no is longer sad because they were lazy enough not to do it. No, they can. They can off. still impeach him so he doesn't run again. They can still impeach him. Yeah. He. They can still impeach him now, now that he's not in office anymore, so he doesn't run again. Because if he runs again, he's going to win again because the stupid. Hold because on. people are Hold idiots. No, no, no. We can't say that. We can't say that. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't say Why that. Why not? Because we will hurt people's feelings. Your I would feelings. say. You I would say. Yeah, we gotta, political views. We gotta, get, we gotta do it. I would say that they are misinformed by the words that he says. Because anybody can look at the words that he tweets and the things that he say and says, huh? Why would you say that? Like, you're the president of the free world. The leader of the free world, the commander in chief, and you're out here having temper tantrums on Twitter. I mean, that's true. Like, okay, I'm I'm not gonna say any more because I'm not gonna get any more. I, I'm afraid of it getting too political. Yeah, don't get too political. We, we're just gonna have. Okay, to so we're gonna stay. So speaking on it, but not being political about it, it's just it's kind of funny to me. Um, the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. They banned him from rejoining, like, their faction. So, basically, he can't do movies, television shows, nice. television oh appearances, my. any oh of my. the sort. I mean, he could probably do maybe maybe stuff that isn't, um, what do they call it, maybe indie? Maybe he could do indie stuff? Yeah, he can definitely do indie, but nothing on a national level, right? Yeah, nothing on a national <laughs> level. I thought that was so funny, Patty. <laughs> so funny. So funny. And then they try to kick him out of his resort, um, Mar a Lago. They try to kick him resort. out. Yes, because they said technically you're not supposed to stay there more than three years. It's, it's a resort, and I guess they want people to be able to come in and out, in and out, you know, rotation. Yeah. He's been there since like 1993 or something. And That's more than three to... years. They need to. Yeah. They, <laughs> they should have kicked him out in 1996, not 2000 yeah. fucking 21. It's a yes, yeah, yeah, sir. It's been it's been a long ass time. You're gonna have to leave now. It's like, but I live here now. Yeah. Yeah. So that I found that all funny. Man, it, it's 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 a dark day in America because of the whole when everything was at its heightened stuff. Like people people were talking about race wars, making jokes about race wars and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I kid you not, I. Uh, was on my way. This is when I was working at a different security company. I was in uh, Elk Grove. It was it's a suburb way out there. I was driving to Little Village, and 
the Mexicans in that area stopped me because mm-hmm. they weren't allowing black people into their neighborhood because of the riots. I got turned around because I was black. And I was trying to cut through Little Village to get to my place, which I live on the south side, so I have to pass Little Village anyway to get to the south side. Well, well, to be fair, now I know that it sounds really bad, but I know people that were there, people that were watching it and sending me video that day of everything that was going on. Mm-hmm. There had been a big group of black people the night before that came over there and basically rioted down the street. So the oh, no, got I understand that. Popped it. Yeah, I, 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 understand, really I understand why they did it. I think what it is is that you can't really tell who the gangbanger and who, and I think maybe yeah. they thought that it was racially motivated, so they just decided to put an embargo there. <laughs> I, I understand. Not telling the under, I don't understand why they did it, but the fact that they were all in the streets and they stopped every single car and they turned around the black people, it was... It was damn near frightening because I didn't know what they were going to do to me. They could have pulled me out of the car and whooped my ass. Oh, they did. They were doing all they of that. They were doing that for a lot of people they, that were angry. They did a lot of that. They did a lot of that, too. Man. A lot thing, of people of color. A lot of those gangs were formed in response, for the most part, anyway, for the community. Now, I'm not trying to yeah. and glorify gang life whatsoever. Yeah. But once upon a time, before drugs were really introduced heavy into it, they actually had some sort of meeting. Like, the Vice Lords had their own community outreach centers. True. And they were trying to reach out to kids. They were giving out, you know, Black Panthers gave out food and, and eggs and, and milk to everyone. Like, it's not like right. it's, it's a new thing or a new concept. Just a lot of drugs and cartel stuff has gotten real nasty. So now they are forced to be nasty. This, this is very true. Uh, we're going to change the subject from uh, the political views of... <laughs> us <laughs> and <laughs> we are going to go straight into the movies that are coming out pretty soon godzilla versus motherfucking king kong Woo! yes baby yes 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 i am ready for that i the love a good monster my, movie. my fight scenes is uh is pretty much exactly there i want i want godzilla and kong baby. right Yes. Somebody yes. uh actually Somebody at Hollywood finally realized that we don't want any story behind a Godzilla movie because they've been trying to reboot it like how many times exactly already? Just just give us the big monster. We get it. Already. We get it. Mm-hmm. He smashed things. But, he arrived. But, he uh, smashed. Uh, uh, uh. Not he. Not he. Godzilla it. is a woman. No, Godzilla no. is a, Godzilla is a it because it's both genders. It's a male and a female. Yeah, it can reproduce it by it by by itself. They proved that right in the, the 90s. Almost. Yeah, Godzilla is asexual. What? It reproduces yeah. by itself. <gasps> oh, I love it even more. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. That's, they, they, like, the first Godzilla that fucking came out, They when he had all those eggs and whatnot, they said it in yeah. that movie. So, I was little. I don't ever think I went back and watched it. And even man, I, was just I watched in that love movie like Godzilla. I watched that movie like so many fucking times, and then they had the cartoon of Godzilla on Fox Kids. Yes. So it was the like, cartoon was so good. The cartoon was so good. After Big Boy and it was a big guy and Rusty, the big guy and motherfucking Rusty. I love the big guy and Rusty. I'm not sure if you guys know what the big guy and Rusty is. Big, big guy, guy and Rusty. Yes, that was a um. Uh, ooh, shoot. Let me big, Google it because I remember. Big guy and Rusty. I remember that. Yeah, I love the big guy and Rusty. It's a very, very, very old cartoon. Ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, says, and uh, Rusty the Robot. Talking about mm-hmm. the Iron Giant. I was just like, that's my dude. No, it's no, kind of no. like 19, the Iron Giant, but not so 1992, much. 1992, 1999, Big Guy and Rusty the ro- the Boy Robot. It was so good. Just think of if uh the Iron Giant and Astro Boy became friends. Ooh, somebody's background. Yeah, someone's background is like loud. Yeah, it's not me. There's literally no Jesus. one around me. That is Jesus. Shame on thee, Jesus. Okay. Shame on thee. But, I'm, but what I'm looking forward to about the Godzilla vs. King Kong movie, I'm actually looking forward to if they're going to actually team up at the end like most versus movies. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I find very weird? That there is the content that's coming out right now isn't out. Say what? Like because COVID restrictions and stuff like that. 
like new things have sort of slowed down the metric system. Yeah, like not there hasn't been anything original, original in a long ass time. They're just rebooting books, video games. I hate it so and, much. And I hate it. <laughs> it's like there's no originality anymore. But you know, it's good for all these books and games to get movies and whatnot, but I kind of miss that, you know, that original stuff that comes out. Stories, yeah, like Project Power on fucking Netflix. I'm not sure that was a book. I'm thinking that was a book or a video game or whatnot, but it was a good fucking movie. It was good. It oh, was good. It was so good. And so, so uh, good. what's that other movie with Will Smith? Uh, Bright something? Uh, Bright. Bright. Yeah, Bright. It's Bright. That mm-hmm. was original. I'm like, okay, okay, but I'm not gonna take away stuff like The Witcher, The Shannara Chronicles, The Vampire Diaries. Those were good books. Good. You books. saw The Shannara Chronicles? Yeah, I saw The Shannara Chronicles. Oh, it was so good. I'm so mad they didn't come out with another season and finish it. It was so good. The one show that I'm Made upset. Made me cry. The one show that I'm upset that they didn't have a season two was uh, Terra Nova. And Netflix, I did not get into Terra Nova. I love Terra Nova. And Netflix picked up Terra Nova. I thought, okay, season two, season two, season two. No, Terra Nova never came to season at all. I don't trust Netflix anymore. Yeah, like, they break your heart. It, they've ruined quite a few shows for me. Hold and on. It, they haven't ruined all shows. Hold up. Hold I up. Didn't say all, Netflix but a lot. has been a great place to get like weird stuff done. And to be honest with you, the Dave Chappelle specials alone, like I would say, do it all over again just yeah. for the Dave Chappelle specials alone. <laughs> I mean, Love, Death, and Robots are getting the fucking season two. That's and weird that as fuck. Very magnificent. It was. Well. I like it. Really I like Love, Death, and, Death, and Robots. That, that was, was weird as too. fuck, but it was a good weird I as fuck. I like though. weird things. Yeah. It was a good weird as fuck, though. It was a good weird as fuck. I love Because that Death one episode with the cat, the one, I'm a little bit of a pet lover, but the one with the cat was so good. The one with the monster where the girl ended up being the monster and then the yes. one with the wolf soldier were really good. You know what my favorite one was? My favorite one was when they were on a drifting ship and that ship pretty much created an alternate reality for, for the people that were dying in there and the one yeah. dude that knew even though he was trying to save everybody else, he couldn't save everybody else, so he just drifted into his own little world too as well. The ship just kept on just drifting forever. It was some some type of organism or something that was just taking over their own ship. And it was giving them like these realities and whatnot. And I think he was the only one that was alive. All of them were just dead. So was the organism essentially living off of them then? If he wasn't dead? Yes, essentially yes. Essentially yes. It was Dang. just drifting. The, their, their shit was just drifting. Dang, I did not remember that episode. I keep remember. I remember the the spider one. Ooh, spider one. Oh, yeah, I love that one. The spider one. That was a good one. I remember the werewolf one too. That was pretty dope. I'm, I'm thinking, I may have to rewatch that just for that. Yeah, it's so many clips that you just have to rewatch. It's kind of hard to focus on all of them because it's yeah. so many short clips. It's like, oh god. But my least favorite one was the one with the Asian girl in that constant loop she was stuck in. That one I didn't really mm-hmm. like so much. That constant loop, I didn't really like it so much. You know, I think I tend to not like things with constant loops. It gives me anxiety. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> like, here. oh my god, get us out of here. Yeah, because at the end, it's like first, at the end, it repeats itself from from the beginning. So it's like, she sees him on the ground dead, and at the end, he sees her on the ground dead. And then he looks over there across the alleyway, and it's her again, same reaction, and now he's chasing her all, all over again. Yeah, I did see that one. She wakes up. I think she sees him kill somebody or yeah, and something the, like that. Yeah, and at the end, we see who he actually killed, and it was her. It was her. Yeah. yeah. You know which one's another good one, if you haven't seen it? Uh, it's a movie about a hand. It's I don't really know. weird. Is that it's, an, it's an animated movie just purely about a hand that gets cut off, and it reattaches to its owner again. But it's like this whole big journey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I know it sounds weird and it's a weird concept, but like, you know how the thing from uh, the Adams Family is? How he just walks yeah. around? That's pretty much a gigantic movie about the thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. That sounds funny. 
I was gonna say Idle Hands. I remember that. <laughs> Idle Hands was another good one, man. That yeah. Was great. Idle Hands. I mean, I don't understand why they never made a second one. Supposedly that it was on the table. Seth Green was really excited to try and do it. And they I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's been on the table, but you know, funding and writers and creative differences kind of get in the way of most movies that were supposed to be made and whatnot. Speaking of movies mm-hmm. being made, also, did you guys hear that Killmonger is going to be... Actually, Michael B. Jordan is going to return as Killmonger if need be. Which means they're not confident that the next Black Panther movie is going to do well without Chad. Can you blame Adam. them? Like, dude, the other day it was really terrible. Like, I was, uh, I was literally... Watching, uh, because I belong to like a little Marvel group that sort of like keeps me updated and all the stuff going on in the Marvel universe as far as like comic books and stuff. Mm-hmm. Some dude really triggered me. Well, <laughs> he he showed did. a picture, uh, you know, the Then and Now challenge, right? You said what? He showed yeah. a picture of the Then and Now challenge, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Posted a picture of Chadwick Boseman as, as Then, and then he shows him as the Crypt Keeper for the Now challenge. And that really made wow. me sad. Wow. Like, really? I admit that it's sort of funny, but, like, it ma- it gave me a huge sad. Like, why would he do that? It's too soon. It's very too, too soon. soon. Dude's not even, like, five months dead, and you're already making jokes about him. Too soon. I mean, let's just be completely too honest. What's too soon that's been going on for years is the whole Full Metal Alchemist joke about the whole homunculus, the first one that, that was made, the girl and the dog. That will never be okay to be made fun of. Oh god, I know what you're I talking don't... about. No, they make jokes about that all the time. Too soon. Wife, all really. the time. Way too soon. Too soon. It's just too soon. The only thing that, that really triggers me, like, just as bad, I think, on that notion, is the goddamn dog from Futurama. Yeah. Man, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, it really don't, pisses me don't. off. Like, if you really want to get to a spot where you piss me off. I can't even think about it without hearing a song and getting sad. That It was just too much. Yeah, man, and what makes it worse is, alright, so, like, you know how I was saying before, I did those conventions and stuff, there was a dude that dressed around the con every single time, and then he brought along the dog in the little con seat. Oh, wow, it reminds Trash. me of that, it, rem- it reminds me of Damn Uncle Iroh's song, Little Soldier. Oh, no, <laughs> not the Little Soldier. I'm walking Leaves home. from the vine, they're falling slow. <laughs> also, that episode yesterday, I cried. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I was about to go to sleep when that song came out. I was like, oh no. Here comes the tears. <laughs> I'm walking like, I, I got, like, I kid you not, I was wrapped up in my bed about to drift away inside here. Leaves from the vine. I was like, oh no. <laughs> here comes the tears. <laughs> was, oh, man. That is so yeah, fucking bad. Enough. Uncle Iron. Okay. So sad. Do you, know, do you know that the reason why uh, that it affects me so much is that the uh, um the voice actor to Uncle voice Iroh actor. died yeah. and they dedicated that to him because he would always sing that song. Sad. That was yeah. definitely that, a sad face. That's like Hodor. I I I I I cannot get over Game of Thrones and how they did Hodor like that. Like I Hodor. I can't yeah, get over how they did fucking Ned Stark. He was the honorary. He was he was, he was a man among England. honor. He was so honorary. He yeah, was, but he he should have stood his freaking ground instead of let his his best friend get him into some shit that he shouldn't have been in. He should have stood his ground. He wasn't like he was some little poop putt. You know, he had great dignity, great honor. He was stronger than a mofo, so he could have actually gotten out of that if he would have stood his ground. Instead, he let his daughter watch him get his head cut off, and he let his friend drag him into some stuff. You got you got to stop letting people drag you into stuff. And you like everybody kept saying it. His his wife said it. Everybody was just like, please don't, please. And you could have said no. Yeah, he could have said no. Just... He felt like it was his duty to the king and to the realm. Mm-mm. Well, well, duty. Will get you remember is, that so... duty would get you killed. Get your whole family killed. For real. I mean, no one in his family really died besides him. Everybody died. No, no, not um, his wife. Is, she, is his wife still alive or she died too? No, wife is dead. Two sons are dead. 
They're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. The Red Wedding. I was talking about the little boy. The little boy was freaking running, and, you know, the bastard shot him with an arrow right in front of his big brother as his big brother was trying to sh- save him. Then killed the big brother, too. Cut his head off and put a freaking uh wolf head on top of him. Yeah, that was a fucked yeah. up wedding. And they did it oh, so yeah. petty as they all said, she don't want to marry my daughter. We're going to kill your family. Oh, God, no. Mm-hmm. Why? Stab, stab the dog on pregnant wife up in the belly. Oh, it was terrible. Stabby stab. Definitely stabby, stabby stab. stab. Definitely stabby stab. But uh, I just don't like fucking, okay. I used to be cool with this one guy. He, he will name unnamed in this show. We're going to call him Bob. I used to be friends mm-hmm. with Bob, and Bob loved Ramsey. And I'm like, why do you love Ramsey so much? He said, because he's just amazing. I'm like, dude, he fucking cut off what's his name's balls. Okay, so okay, don't 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 get me wrong. Oh, he God. was a terrible person. Yes, and he deserves. But to die. as a vil- and he deserves to die. But as a villain, he was amazing. Yeah, as that a was villain, an amazing villain. Yeah, as a villain, he I'm was a amazing. villain lover. I'm a villain lover. First, I ain't gonna even lie about it. I do love villains. He was an amazing villain. Even I started to hate him. Like, oh, so you just love Joffrey then, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man, that <laughs> man was the mint. King Joffrey. I love. You love King Joffrey. I love. Oh, it was so sad when the little boy jumped and killed himself. I was like, oh damn. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That show was good. Like I can't wait for. They said they're doing um they're House doing, of Dragons. Yeah, House of Targaryens. They're gonna be doing that as a prequel. Hopefully, we get more answers in that show. We won't about. We didn't get more questions now nah, because it's not. I want to know what happens to Arya and them. Like what they gonna do past whatever. Oh like, no, no. I guess See, I have to a lot wait of... for the fucking books to come out in like ten years. Yeah, because supposedly this is a, a prequel, I believe. Yeah, it's they... a prequel. Yeah, House of okay, Tigerian. So it's, so it's going to show stuff that happens before, but there's so much stuff that was unanswered in the show. I'm hoping that the that will help. Like, the first um, the first walker, like the king of the uh, the White Walkers, I'm trying to figure out how he came to be. Yeah, but they, didn't, tried to they didn't fight, so though. Regular. They didn't fight. The first men fought the first walk, the um, walkers. But then that was before Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark's time, way before their fucking time, and way before the um Tigarians. So was, oh shoot. So we won't well, get we'll... to see the first. We, we won't get to see the first men that fought the you White don't Walkers. Think they're gonna, you don't no. think they're gonna explore it? No, oh, because man. it's gonna be it's it's gonna be centered around uh Robert's rebellion. Oh. Uh, so he's gonna rebel against the Mad King. So probably, we're probably gonna have about. I would say a few episodes, like one or two, maybe before Robert snaps and says rebellion time, and then just everything goes to hell in Nine Realms. Well, either way, I'm just looking forward to some Game of Thrones action. I'm missing it desperately. I know. I'm, it, it definitely has been missed because I need to find some way, somehow, to fucking reignite my interest in getting HBO again. <laughs> because um, now since Star Trek is over, I watch everything on Star Trek on CBS. Now CBS is just sitting there like the new HBO. Like, look at you. How is the new Star Trek? I it is amazing. Discovery. I have really seen Discovery is amazing. If you don't have not seen this Star Trek Discovery, you need to see it. You just need to see it. It's so amazing. It's are so they doing good. another season? Yes, they are. Season four is coming out like maybe later on oh, this wow. year. Oh wow! You guys on season four already? Okay. Yes. So, Maybe that's and the episodes so are an hour long, and if you get tired of the seriousness, you also have uh, Star Trek: The Lower Decks, which is more like a Family Guy, Simpsons type of Star Trek thing. It's really funny. And then if you just get tired of laughing, you want to get, you know, you want to see some of your faces. Also, the the um, spinoff called Picard. He has his own show now, and that's yeah. amazing too. So I definitely recommend. Star Trek Discovery. I know, I'm sort of interested really in Picard because I really do love Picard. Yeah, Picard is amazing. It's it starts off that's so true. fucking. That's true. That's basically my introduction to Star Trek universe, even though I know that there's others. But you know. Yeah, yeah. 
but the card was my personal favorite. Like, there, there's also especially one, with there's the weird actually, like board movie, the weird board movie that they created in the '90s. I watched that one. Mm-hmm. There's uh two more things I want to talk about before we have to go. We have to wrap. We have to start wrapping things things up because we're running low on time now. Uh, the Joker's new look. Yay or nay? Nay. Nay. <laughs> I had this conversation with Kendall last night, and I was yeah. posting all those pictures in chat. Like, to be honest, they did nothing really spectacular with them. They didn't take any creative liberties that I felt like feel like the Joker. Just feel like just fit Joker in name. True. I understand. I say it's a nay too. Like they need to fucking leave the whole new age Joker alone and just give us the old Joker somehow, some way. Not even what I was explaining to him is like, all right. So if you see the pictures beforehand, if you look up in the chat, that is end game Joker right there, and he looks classy. His makeup looks like it's on point. His head, his hair is slicked back. He looks like a confident crime boss in there. Like he looks like he's got his shit together. <coughs> Meanwhile, they got this guy who's got face tattoos. All right, so they get rid of the face tattoos. It cleans it up a little bit, which was my primary complaint from the beginning. But then you just see his makeup. Like, Heath Ledger's makeup was smeared tactically, but it seems like they're still going for this ultra try-hard appearance. That's the best way I can describe it. Like, Heath Ledger's Joker looks like he's trying really hard to be the Joker, but he's not. They need to hire cosplayers to do makeup. Instead of just having all these fucking people that are just so fucking lackluster when it comes down to makeup and costumes and whatnot, they need to hire some of these cosplayers that create magnificent at- costumes on a fucking small-ass budget. You know, and you know, I thought to myself, maybe I just don't like Heath or uh, Jared Leto as the Joker in general, but then I realized, like, if anything, he looked relatively, really, really close to what he looks like in Endgame. And if they honestly just pulled that appearance off for him, I would commend them even more. But the teeth I look ugly with girl. him being all gold and stuff like that, you know? I want I, the Joker like to look very, very much like he's got his shit together. Like, in the, like in that case. Yeah, I think because I'm a girl, I just, I just find him attractive, and that's why I like it. Cause I like the Joker new look. I think it's fine. No, he's a handsome, hey, he a handsome man. Hey, there's Brenda. Hi, hey, Brenda. Jared Leto's new look looks like me after dealing with my kids and my niece and nephews for a whole. <laughs> oh God, really? He looks exhausted. His hair is messy. He just looks like he's sick of All right, now Brenda, Brenda. Now, just now, like I was explaining to them, if you look up in the pictures from last night when me and Kendall were having that chat, all right. Doesn't Endgame Joker look like he could possibly be the Jared Leto Joker that we could have, and that it would be so much better, and I think he would look so much better if he looked closer to that? Oh, I like it. I'm sorry. I just saw it again. Just imagine Jared Leto looking like that. Wouldn't he look like a genius? He would look way better if if that's what he went for, but, like, I don't care for his look right now. I didn't care for the face tattoos either. Like, they... And realistically, as... Who thought that was a good idea? Who thought that was a good idea to get fired? People that thought that face tattoos were a good idea. Who thought that was a good idea? They just get fucking fired. I think they were trying to give it, you know, a more, a fresh approach because he is supposed to be a crime boss as well. And, you know, they want to give him that little, uh, that little, no, uh, look. They you want look it. at any crime boss in history, they all are very clean and not obvious. Mm-hmm. He was so obvious. Like, do you really obvious. want to draw attention to yourself because you're the boss of capital? Like, this like say you're hemisphere. just trying to go and get your Starbucks in the morning, and you drive up, and it's like, oh, that's clearly the Joker, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, no, what are you talking about? It's just me. I'm just trying to get my fucking fresh. But that's how, the, like, that's how the Joker is. He's chaotic. He likes that. I don't think the Joker will get tattoos on his fucking face. I do You don't think so? No. 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 Oh, no, I don't think so, no. He, he's not going to be worried about fucking tattooing his entire fucking face with tattoos. He's going to worry about fucking yeah. killing people laughing gas. Come on. He would tattoo yeah. someone else's like face it. to death. He probably would, yes. Definitely would do that. He I, would I definitely, that. like, I could imagine this Joker being more tactful. Like, if you read Endgame, the Joker is more calculated. Because in that one, it's all about the death of Joker and Batman. Together as a Do we right. ever find out his real name? I'm so sick of this Morpheus chair. It lives rent free in my head. 
we right. never find out the Morpheus Batman sitting in the Morpheus chair figuring out that it's not the same freaking Joker and it's like three, but oh, yeah, he's supposed to have a real name. Jokers. Yeah, that's what's really cool about it too. You just, they, they, they get this big like mythology on what the Joker really is. But deep down inside, you already know he just found the pit, the Lazarus pit. Mm-hmm. What? The Lazarus yeah, pit. Yeah, that's what it was, because that's where it ends in the uh, Batman Endgame. Yep. It's the same Joker, just you found the Lazarus pit that Ra's al Ghul was using. Yep. So, we're going to, so, uh, like I said before, we're going short on time, so we're going to talk about one more thing, and we're going to stop. Uh, okay, so who in here plays Dead by Daylight, or have heard of Dead, I Dead by Daylight? I do. I play it. So Dead I'm by Daylight is getting new Stranger Things content. Ooh. Which means Dead by Daylight and Stranger Things could be... Yeah, I thought Daylight. they already had it out already. I don't think so, no. Not yet. Yeah, they do. They do? Yeah, we I'm, played I'm it. telling you, I played it the other day. It's well, that's, why I, I, that, that's new to me. The, day, the, the, the Stranger Things stuff for Dead, Dead by Daylight is new to me. Oh, no, I no, didn't know Stranger Things in it, Ghostface from uh, Scream, which I bought, and then the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, I got all the movie characters because, like, realistically, like, they have a good system set up so that way you can get a majority of the killers and the uh, people for free. <laughs> but the ones that have licensing, you have to pay for the pack. For it. So, like, well, you, know, uh, you know, because, of course, the people that were there really just want, you know, money. Yeah, that's basically the end game of it all. But I still like the system where they allow me to get the other characters if you play long enough. Like, they're original characters. True. And that's all the time we have today. Oh, uh, Brenda, you came so late. I know you were tranquilizing the kids, but... No, I have churros. Like, this is, like, lunchtime, there's food. Like, yeah. You had churros? <laughs> What? Chur- churros. Chur- churros. Churros. I thought she said churros. I thought she said, like, churros. you have churros? I no, want churros. Salmon. I want churros. It's churros. so bad now. You may not want churros, but I want churros. Mm-hmm. I want churros. I want a gordita now. Oh, oh I want a gordita. I'm going to go find me gordita. I'm hungry. So what's, <laughs> what's, what's for lunch? I'm still, I'm still not letting you out the hook on this churro. Right? I want yeah. a churro, Brenda. What's, what's for lunch, Brenda? Uh, for them, they had uh, chicken. The little one had uh some some meat in the face because he didn't want to eat. And <laughs> they Javier went back to class, so it's cool. Oh wow! So since they um, I kind of want to take out today, but I kind of don't want to. I might just eat some steamed vegetables or something, or maybe without seasoning. Oh God, no. No, with mm-hmm. salt and pepper. With salt and pepper. That's not seasoning. Salt and pepper, a little salt, put a little pepper. That's not seasoning. I need the fiber. That's not seasoning. Oh. Brenda, I will, I will talk to you separately on how to season vegetables because I don't know how to season vegetables. Okay. Oh, how dare you? I just put salt and pepper and call it. It's a, that's not seasoning. I, I like At least it. you're putting salt and pepper. The last time <laughs> I talked to you about it, you're just like, oh, I just steamed them. I'm just like, ew. They were I okay. So my no. taste palate is so fucking weird. Like I can eat plain shit and be perfectly fine with it. Like, I can eat. I, I can drink lemon water, which is lemon water, and be perfectly fine. Like, mm, this is delicious. Like I oh, have I, a weird I'll lemon water palate. over regular water any day. Yeah, so. like it's so fucking stupid. But aside from that, you literally have like the taste buds of. Uh, maybe like a seven month old. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. I know I'm uncultured slang, Brenda, but it's okay <laughs> because I love living in my trash can. <laughs> love the trash can. <laughs> this is where I live now. Uh, this is where I live now. This is me now. <laughs> like in uh, Bob's Burgers when he puts on the Sasquatch mask. This is me now. <laughs> I am the trash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's all we have for today. Come back next week for more of the LNG show. Everybody say goodbye to the lovely people. Bye. Bye-bye.